You are listening to KLRN Radio, where liberty and reason still reign. Ready to stand out, Army ROTC prepares you not only as a college student, but as a strong leader, allowing you to earn the rank of second lieutenant. You will be eligible for full tuition, merit-based scholarships, and develop leadership skills essential for your future. Start strong and enhance your college experience. Visit your campus Army ROTC representative today. To find out how you can earn up to a full tuition scholarship, visit GoArmy.com slash podcast to locate your closest ROTC program today. Army officers inspire strength in others. Paid for by the United States Army. At the LASIK Vision Institute, we know LASIK is a big decision, and every one of our patients is unique. That's why we customize your LASIK journey to you. I only have a certain budget. No problem. Right now at the LASIK Vision Institute, get 20% off LASIK when treated in April. That can be over $900 off when treating both eyes, plus guaranteed financing options. So visit GetLVILASIK.com today to start your journey towards 2020 vision. Must mention this promotion to be treated in April of 2024 to qualify. 20% off standard price of wave light procedure cannot be combined with any other offers. Go to GetLVILASIK.com for details. At the LASIK Vision Institute, we know LASIK is a big decision, and every one of our patients is unique. That's why we customize your LASIK journey to you. I'm so busy right now. We offer a mix of convenient days and times, including 30-minute virtual appointments to fit your schedule. I would love it, but I have astigmatism. We treat thousands of patients with astigmatism every month with great outcomes. The LASIK Vision Institute is making your journey towards 2020 vision all about you. So visit GetLVILASIK.com today to start your LASIK journey. I am Conor McGregor, multiple weight MMA champion. I'm a fighter and I've been through many battles in the octagon. Many consider my fights in the octagon heroic, but the real-life heroes are those men and women who fight to protect us every day. The real-life fighters, the real-life heroes, are the firefighters and police officers. These first responders are true heroes, because these brave men and women put themselves in the line of danger every single day protecting us all. The Tunnel to Towers Foundation ensures that first responders from fire, EMS and police departments who are killed in the line of duty with young children have a home without the burden of a mortgage. They are my heroes. They need our help today. I'd like to ask you to join me in donating $11 a month to support their efforts. Your $11 a month honors and supports our first responders. Please call now at 1-844-BRAVEST or visit tunneltotowers.org. Hi, I'm Mike, founder of DollarShaveClub.com. What is DollarShaveClub.com? Well, for a dollar a month, we send high-quality razors right to your door. Yeah, a dollar. Are the blades any good? No. Our blades are f***ing great. Each razor has stainless steel blades and aloe vera lubricating strip and a pivot head. It's so gentle a toddler could use it. And do you like spending $20 a month on brand name razors? 19 go to Roger Federer. I'm good at tennis. And do you think your razor needs a vibrating handle, a flashlight, a back scratcher, and 10 blades? Your handsome ass grandfather had one blade and polio. Looking good, pop up! Stop paying for shave tech you don't need. And stop forgetting to buy your blades every month. Alejandro and I are gonna ship them right to you. We're not just selling razors, we're also making new jobs. Alejandro, what were you doing last month? Not working. What are you doing now? Working. I'm no Vanderbilt, but this train makes hay. So stop forgetting to buy your blades every month and start deciding where you're going to stack all those dollar bills I'm saving you. We are DollarShaveClub.com, and the party is on. I know karate, I know jiu-jitsu, I drive like a gay, so when I'm coming to see you, see you. The following program contains coarse language and adult themes. Listener discretion is advised. Take a breath, I'm not gonna lose. This is what I came here to do. Keep on doing what you do, Rick. You're my favorite host. Favorite host. Favorite host.
I have come here to chew bubble gum and kick ass. And I'm all out of bubble gum. It's time to hear the truth about America's biggest challenges. You're listening to America Off the Rails with your host, Rick Robinson. Good evening, America. Happy Sunday evening. I know for those of you that have to go to work tomorrow, you're like, please stop reminding me that it's Sunday. I know. I get it. Trust me, I used to be there. Anyway, so we're here. We're live. This is the America Off the Rails show. We are the third act for the evening, so hopefully you guys were hanging out for The Lost Wander, and then after that, uh, with our with our good buddy and resident alien Jeff, then after that we had Sunday Night with Alan Ray, um, and I'm your closing act for the evening, and uh, before we get into the monologue, I have to do this. I, I have to, in case you haven't heard this yet, I absolutely have to do this. A good friend of mine on X put out a parody regarding... Poor old Uncle Bozy. May his slightly seasoned ass rest in peace. Here we go. We're so sorry, Uncle Bozy. We're so sorry they shot down your aeroplane. We're so sorry, Uncle Bozy. The cannibals devoured you from your toes up to your brain. We are so sorry, Uncle Bosey. That the cannibals ate your flesh down to the bone. We're so sorry, Uncle Bosey. But at least the kitchen fire did not burn your entire home. So seriously, leave it a leave it to Preezy Puddinhead to start an international incident with a made up story. <laughs> this is the America we live in, ladies and gentlemen. Joe Biden apparently uh, the assumption is at some point this was probably one of the Biden family legends or something. It's something that he was probably told when he was much much younger. That's the common assumption that I hear, even being passed around by other talking heads. And I was like, no, I think he's legit lost his mind. But yeah, so anyway, so Papua New Guinea was really mad about this. They actually have had people making the rounds, explaining that while they don't have active cannibalism anymore, when they did, it was an entirely ritualized situation. And in the words of the guy that was making the rounds, we wouldn't have just eaten any old stringy white guy who fell from the sky. Their words, not mine. But yeah, anyway. Um, so yeah, if you if you've missed that that that's been all the rage this past week. Um, everybody's been talking about it. It's made the rounds pretty much everywhere. That's I think this is the third time on K Line Radio alone that I've played that. But that's actually because because I miss our house parody band, the Third Rail Ramblers. Um, however, even though this person isn't affiliated with that group, if you're not following them, him him already, you should be. Yeah, uh, he goes by Blue State uh, Blue State Snooze on Twitter. Um, you, his at is at Blue Snooze Blue. So if you're not following him yet, you probably should be. Just for that alone, anyway. Um, so yeah, we had to start there because uh, there's going to be plenty of. I don't know. It's kind of a mix tonight. So there's good news. There's not so good news. I mean, I just saw earlier. I actually managed to grab a nap on a Sunday, which I don't get to do very often anymore. Um, But when I woke up, I noticed that apparently rockets were being fired at our troops from Iraq again, yada, yada, yada. Thank you, Joe Biden, for for all your help in, you know, making us look completely feckless and weak throughout the world. We so greatly appreciate it. It's so much fun, you know, when everybody starts to think that we're just a bunch of cracked out morons who don't know what a woman, woman is. So much fun. So much fun. But yeah, so there's been protests everywhere again. Not that that's anything new. Um, 
Elon Omar's daughter was arrested as part of the protest attached to Columbia University. Apparently, she attends their sister university and was protesting on behalf of Hamas and was actually arrested over it because they were asked repeatedly, repeatedly to leave and then refused to do so. Uh, so that's been going on. The interesting thing about that is it started as, you know, we're trying to look out for Gaza because Gaza is facing genocide. Now you have most of these people screaming that they are Hamas. Now keep in mind, if you've ever voted for Donald Trump or even said anything positive about Donald Trump on social media, you're probably already on a watch list. But these people can actually tell you that they identify as terrorists and it's still peaceful protests. So, so there's that. And if it, if it wasn't bad enough, I saw a story today out of New York where a, a bunch of high school kids were, were doing their, you know, one of their extracurriculars. They were on a soccer field and a bunch of migrants took over the field and refused to leave. The cops were called and came and did absolutely nothing. So the high school kids left the field and have no plans on returning anytime soon. Look, it was bad. It's bad enough that we are giving ground in other countries and have been basically from the day that Joe Biden got sworn into office. It's even worse that we're now giving ground to these people in our own country. And even our police are refusing to do anything about it. I, I, just, I really don't understand that. Because every, like, every so often, you'll have the cops show up and they'll actually do their job. And then, you know, right down the right down the road, apparently, you call the cops and they do absolutely nothing. But this is the America that we live in now. I, I've said this probably after, well, probably about three months after I started doing this particular show. This show is one of the longest running ones we've had. The only one that ran, uh, would have run longer if it still existed, was Finding Common Ground. But with this one, I've been saying from about three months after I created the show concept that I had no idea how prophetic the name would be. Uh, and it's, you know, other than there, there, there was a slight reprieve under Trump for at least a little bit. And then now not so much, but all right. So let's start getting into the meat of the show, shall we? You guys have heard me prattle on enough. Um, so th this is from our friends at Real Clear Politics. So I know if, if you're like me, you eat, sleep and breathe this stuff. And if you're not like me, you probably wouldn't be listening to the show anyway. So I'm assuming you are. But there have been a few people that have put, tried to put out stories today that Biden is on the rise and Trump is on the decline, especially when you add um, RFK Jr. into the mix. We'll get into RFK Jr. in a second because I have a question. But I just want to let you know, uh, these are the averages. So if the election were to be held today, according to the RCP poll average, it would be Trump 44.5%, uh, Joe Biden 44.1%. That is a... Point four swing for Trump. Uh, there uh, of the five main polls, the five-way RCP average is forty-one point nine Trump, forty point six Biden. That's Trump one point three. Um, if we average all the battleground states together, Trump forty-eight point one, Biden forty-five point two. That's Trump two point nine. Um, as of right now, if we just go into the battleground states specifically. Uh, Battleground Wisconsin showing Trump 48.4%, Joe Biden 47.4%, that's Trump 0.1, or plus 1. Now that's within the margin of error, obviously, because these things usually have plus minus 3. Um, Arizona 49 for Trump, 44.5 for Biden, that is Trump 4.5. With all the noise they're making about abortion, I'm kind of surprised to see that much of a swing there, but we'll see how long that holds. Uh, Georgia, 49.7% Trump, 45.5 to Biden. That's Trump plus 4.2. Uh, that one is actually slightly outside of the margin of error. Michigan is 47.4% Trump, 44.1% uh, Biden. That's 3.3 to Trump, so still within margin of error. Pennsylvania, as of right now, only has Biden up by 0.5, which is, again, well within the margin of error. Pennsylvania for Trump, 46 uh, Biden, 46.5. Now, I would like to remind you that Joe Biden has spent the last three days and made eight can campaign stops in Pennsylvania, and he's only up by 0.5 percentage points. 
when you have to when an incumbent has to campaign in his home state eight times let that sink in and we're not even anywhere near election day yet technically it hasn't even been decided yet um Trump is still the presumptive nominee because there's a couple of places still left that haven't ca- haven't cast votes, but it's pretty much a foregone conclusion. Uh, North Carolina shows Trump at 48.5, Biden at 44.3, so that's Trump 4.2. Again, that is outside of the margin of error. Nevada 47.5, uh, Biden 44.3, that's Trump 3.2. Now, again, I don't trust any of these polls really any further than I can throw them because we don't have national elections. And the reason I bring them up is because at this point, unless you already know who you're going to vote for, then if especially if you're not planning on voting at all, you, you really need to go out and vote. Because especially if you're making the right choice, and I'm not going to tell you which one that is, but if you listen to the show, then you already know what my opinion of that is. We need to not only win the Electoral College, we also need to destroy Biden with the popular vote. Or it, there's, there's, It's never going to be enough. And this is why I get so mad when I, like people that live in my state, well, all 77 counties have gone for Trump both times. It does, I don't really like him, so it doesn't really matter if I vote for him or not. Um, are you voting for the communists or against the communists? Because that's kind of where we are right now. And I know people don't like it when I make it that black and white and that binary of a choice, but it really it really has become that simple. Are you voting for communism or against communism? Because I've been saying this now for about a week. I put out uh, the first Rick's Rants in a while. You can find it on my profile on X, because for a while I'm going to do it as an X exclusive. But you can look at a few things and, and make a lot of this make sense. If you realize that sometimes it takes a monster to stop a monster. And I've been saying this for a while for people that don't seem to be willing to understand it. Our founding fathers were not the sanitized versions we were taught about in, in, in grade school history. They weren't. It's, it's no different than the, you know, there, there's, there, there, was, there used to be what's called a children's Bible. That's, how, that's what they did with everything. They, they, made, they put it on a level the kids could understand it. But the thought, the thought process was originally that you teach them enough for them to understand it, and then they keep learning more of it as they get older. The problem is they stop teaching it. And now the only people that are teaching it, for the most part, are people that have an anti-American agenda. So it's really easy to find bad things that, that our founding fathers and other people throughout our history have done if you want to look at it that way. Unless you want to see exactly why they did it. Because, ladies and gentlemen, it's not as black and white as they make it seem like on TV. Sometimes the ends do justify the means. And that's something that I have been trying to make people understand for a very, very long time. You can do the wrong things for the right reasons and still have it work out the way that you need it to. Please see the War of 1812 as a primary example. Do you guys realize what what we did to the British in the War of 1812 if the United Nations existed in 1812 America would have been put on trial for war crimes because we slaughtered a bunch of British soldiers in their sleep. We won the first revolutionary war, primarily in some cases by using what is now referred to as guerrilla war tactics. We started that stuff, or at least started using it more commonly than pretty much anybody else was. The British had a bunch of rules as to how they did things. The Native Americans had a bunch of rules as to how they did things. The most common mistake that armies make is expecting people to follow the same traditions, norms, and morals as they do. And every time you get a side that leans too heavily on those things, they're the ones that lose. And why am I saying this? Because if you look at what's going on today, with as many people as we have, that are protesting in the name of terrorists and terrorist organizations, we are seeding ground everywhere. And if we do not wake up, especially suburban, white, college graduate women, if you do not wake up, eventually what's left of you will be the ones on social media screaming that you want your stolen land back. If you've been lucky enough to keep your head Because the common mistake that the British made 
and the common mistake that the Native Americans made and pretty much everybody else that we've ever fought a war to actually win a war with has made was expecting us to follow the same rules that they do. Ladies and gentlemen, war is not pretty. War was never supposed to be pretty. The point of a war, if it comes to that, is to kill your enemy and to destroy them to a level that they can't attack you anymore. We got away from that for the longest time because of the Cloward Piven strategy. And I've gone over that on this show and others before, so I don't I really, don't really have time to go into it tonight. But just as a reminder, that is why, because that all came about after World War II, that is why pretty much every war that we have fought since then has been either a police action or a limited engagement because they started this policy that intertwined all of the world's economies. And if you try to bomb somebody back to the Stone Age now, like we used to do, then eventually the rest of the world is going to fear or feel the ripples of that action, which is why we fought North Korea to a stalemate. We fought Vietnam to a stalemate, and eventually it would draw. We fought Iraq twice, basically to stalemates, and now they're winning the day. Hell, their people are lobbing missiles at us again today. I thought we went to war with these people to stop all this. I'm just saying. So not only do we have all of that going on, you have a former president of the United States who is actually the party front runner to assume the office if he wins the nomination and the election, which as of right now he would be on track to do if it were held today. But because of that, the Biden administration, the Biden DOJ, has come after him with everything they have. Everything they have. The opening arguments for his hush money trial start tomorrow. Do you guys realize what a deck of cards, or stack, or house of cards, sorry, this thing is? This is a mess. So first of all, you have the prosecutor claiming that somehow Donald Trump def defrauded the American people because he didn't use campaign funds to try to pay off Stormy Daniels. Donald Trump is stating unequivocally that he didn't even know the money was being used as hush money. I mean, Donald, look, th this happens all the time with rich people. Again, just like the other case that just happened in New York. This happened, these things happen all the time. Somebody comes at somebody who's uber rich with an accusation, whether it's true or not, they consult their attorneys, the attorneys draw up a non-disclosure agreement, there's a sum of money that's agreed to, the agreement gets signed, the money gets paid, and everybody goes on about their day. But even if you do that, if your attorney is the one who basically handles the exchange, it's technically considered a legal fee. There's absolutely, is it immoral? Yes. Is it illegal? No. And this is what is driving me crazy about everything that's happening in New York right now. This may be following the letter of the law after they change the language and change the font, if you get where I'm going with this. But it is not following the spirit of the law. And now, <laughs> now you have people that hate Trump that are like, what the hell? I, I need you to listen to this. I, I need you to listen to this. It's only a couple minutes. Um, it looks like he has a very good shot at winning. He's garnering a lot of support, even from those who are not normally big fans of his, who feel that he is being railroaded with these various cases. Do you agree with that? I, I think he has a, a, a decent shot. I mean, one of the reasons I did not support him uh, for the nomination was because I also think that he, uh, he could lose this election. In fact, I think given the, the terrible performance of the Biden administration and his degree of unpopularity, the fact that he's only a little bit ahead, the polls show uh, Trump only a little bit ahead, is actually not a sign of strength. I think uh, other Republican candidates would be much uh, more ahead. But uh, I do think that he has an opportunity to win if he doesn't boot it. Um, 
How about getting people to serve him in his administration? You said that would be a difficulty if it came to that. What did you mean by that? Well, I think, yeah, I, 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 th I think most people recognize it may be hard to get uh, people to serve in the administration, and he'll probably put a premium on people who, uh, you know, he feels uh, would be more subservient to him. And, you know, that's, that's an area of concern. But uh, at the end of the day, you have to remember, I, serving in his administration, I was fine with his policies. Right. I think his policies were good policies. My problems came with his behavior, which I found very troubling after the election. And and I think, you know, it, I, I, I think the idea that he's going to be an autocrat and take over power like some right-wing dictator uh, is not the threat facing our country. The threat facing our country is from the far left and the drift uh, that's been occurring toward uh, really a socialistic a system and one uh, that brooks no opposition, one with, that cancels people, that has only one viewpoint taught in colleges, that uh, you know tries to push parents out of the picture when it comes to the education of their children. It's a heavy-handed bunch of thugs, in my opinion, and that's where the threat is. If All right, so that was that was Bill Barr of all people actually giving former President Donald Trump a little bit of praise and even pointing out that he thinks the real issues in our country are coming from the left, not from the right. I did I did notice a bit of a tongue in cheek way that he pointed out, well, he's not going to be a right wing dictator. Um, have you noticed most of the dictators aren't actually from the right? This is the other thing I can't seem to ever get anybody to agree with me on. I really don't understand why. But it's okay, I guess. I mean, because it kind of has to be. <laughs> I mean, what are you going to do? Sit here and split hairs? It's not going to do any good anyway. All right, so we're going to get ready to take a break. We are just about the halfway point. Um, so when we come back, we've got plenty more stuff to talk about. So uh, just hang around. I'm going to be out for about four and a half, maybe counting the bumpers. And uh, you're listening to the America Off the Rails show. Live right here on KLRRadio.com. We do this thing every Sunday night. Well, we're going to try to do it again every Sunday night. Jeff's in the chat. He's about to call me out if I don't fix it. Um, but, yeah, supposed to be 10 p.m. Eastern Sunday nights. I'm going to start trying to get back into the swing of that, especially because we are coming up on election season. I mean, we're in the middle of election season, but we're about to start campaign season in earnest here. Um, but we're going to take a break. When we come back, plenty more stuff to talk about. Boy, oh boy, is there. You're listening to America Off the Rails. I'm Rick Robbins. We'll be right back. You're listening to us on KLRNRadio.com. This one goes out to Zelda. No, I ain't perfect, but I'm learning how to be the best I can. But I got demons collecting dust. And I buried them so damn far down so they can't find their way back up. So don't stay my kindness for weakness Cause I can flip that switch And you can find out quick You are listening to KLRN Radio Where liberty and reason still reign Ready to stand out, Army ROTC prepares you not only as a college student, but as a strong leader, allowing you to earn the rank of second lieutenant. You will be eligible for full tuition, merit-based scholarships, and develop leadership skills essential for your future. Start strong and enhance your college experience. Visit your campus Army ROTC representative today. To find out how you can earn up to a full tuition scholarship, visit GoArmy.com slash podcast to locate your closest ROTC program today. Army officers inspire strength in others. Paid for by the United States Army. At the LASIK Vision Institute, we know LASIK is a big decision, and every one of our patients is unique. That's why we customize your LASIK journey to you. I only have a certain budget. No problem. Right now at the LASIK Vision Institute, get 20% off LASIK when treated in April. That can be over $900 off when treating both eyes, plus guaranteed financing options. So visit GetLVILASIK.com today to start your journey towards 2020 vision. Must mention this promotion and be treated in April of 2024 to qualify. 20% off standard price of wave light procedure cannot be combined with any other offers. Go to GetLVILASIK.com for details. At the LASIK Vision Institute, we know LASIK is a big decision, and every one of our patients is unique. That's why we customize your LASIK journey to you. 
I'm so busy right now. We offer a mix of convenient days and times, including 30-minute virtual appointments to fit your schedule. I would love it, but I have astigmatism. We treat thousands of patients with astigmatism every month with great outcomes. The LASIK Vision Institute is making your journey towards 2020 vision all about you. So visit GetLVILASIK.com today to start your LASIK journey. I am Conor McGregor, multiple weight MMA champion. I'm a fighter and I've been through many battles in the octagon. Many consider my fights in the octagon heroic, but the real life heroes are those men and women who fight to protect us every day. The real life fighters, the real life heroes, are the firefighters and police officers. These first responders are true heroes because these brave men and women put themselves in the line of danger every single day protecting us all. The Tunnel to Towers Foundation ensures that first responders from fire, EMS and police departments who are killed in the line of duty with young children have a home without the burden of a mortgage. They are my heroes. They need our help today. I'd like to ask you to join me in donating $11 a month to support their efforts. Your $11 a month honors and supports our first responders. Please call now at 1-844-BRAVEST or visit tunneltotowers.org. Hi, I'm Mike, founder of DollarShaveClub.com. What is DollarShaveClub.com? Well, for a dollar a month, we send high-quality razors right to your door. Yeah, a dollar. Are the blades any good? No. Our blades are f***ing great. Each razor has stainless steel blades, an aloe vera lubricating strip, and a pivot head. It's so gentle a toddler could use it. And do you like spending $20 a month on brand name razors? 19 go to Roger Federer. I'm good at tennis. And do you think your razor needs a vibrating handle, a flashlight, a back scratcher, and 10 blades? Your handsome ass grandfather had one blade and polio. Looking good, pop up! Stop paying for shave tech you don't need. And stop forgetting to buy your blades every month. Alejandro and I are gonna ship them right to you. We're not just selling razors, we're also making new jobs. Alejandra, what were you doing last month? Not working. What are you doing now? Working. I'm no Vanderbilt, but this train makes hay. So stop forgetting to buy your blades every month and start deciding where you're going to stack all those dollar bills I'm saving you. We are DollarShaveClub.com, and the party is on. I know karate, I know jiu-jitsu, I drive like a gay, so when I'm coming to see you, see you. The following program contains coarse language and adult themes. Listener discretion is advised. into the program ladies and gentlemen up next reason 11 million two hundred and seventy one thousand four hundred and seventy two as to why we should leave the UN um, coming at you right now according to our friends over at the blaze in case you didn't know this was happening so this was originally reported through Fox News Digital um, and they have reported the United Nations Division for Palestinian Rights, NGO Action News, which reportedly gives updates about civil society organizations concerning the quote-unquote Palestine issue, pointed readers to the U.S. Campaign for Palestinian Rights list of five ways to take action for tax day. 
The report mentioned that the list included instructions about how some protesters who didn't want their tax dollars to fund genocide could disrupt for a free Palestine. The second item on the list pointed a user to a hyperlink for protesters who wanted to engage in a quote-unquote coordinated multi-city economic blockade to free Palestine. However, it's unclear how creating disruptions in the U.S. would affect the situation in the Middle East. It wouldn't. It's just an excuse to get them fired up because this is all about the same thing. Um, the site laid out specifically how participants could be the most effective with their, air quote, disruptions. The site reads, the proposal states that in each city, we will identify and blockade major choke points in the economy, focus on po focusing on points of production and circulation with the aim of causing the most economic impact, as did the port shutdowns in recent months in Oakland, California, and Melbourne, Australia, just as a few examples. There is a sense in the streets in this recent and unprecedented movement for Palestine that escalation has become necessary. There is a need to shift from symbolic actions to those that cause pain to the economy. As Yemen is bombed to secure global trade and billions of dollars are sent to the Zionist war machine, we must recognize that the global economy is complicit in genocide, and together we will coordinate to disrupt and blockade economic, logistical hubs and the flow of, ca of capital. I, 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 need you to, to, I need you to hear this last part again. As Yemen is bombed to secure global trade and billions of dollars are sent to the Zionist war machine, we must recognize that the global economy is complicit in genocide. And together, we will coordinate to disrupt and blockade economic logistical hubs and the flow of capital. These people are not simply protesting anymore. They are beginning to move into economic terrorism. And they're doing it for a reason. And it's not the reason they're telling you. It has very little to do, as far as the people that are orchestrating this stuff anyway, with Palestine or anything else. It has to do with we are now having the same tactics that we used to allow George Soros to employ in countries where we wanted changes to be made. He's now pointing those weapons and all of the, th the craft that he learned and everything that he honed against the Western world. And I've gone in, I've gone through this before, so we're going to do a Cliff's Notes version really, really quick. There was a, that, remember, we talked about this, Cloward Piven. Um, they wanted to tie the world ec economies together because they thought it would help ensure that there was never another world war. Because everybody thought the first one was going to be the only one, and then just a couple decades later, there was another one. So they started taking steps to try to change that. Now, along those same lines, they also thought, they being most of the people in first world nations, thought that if they could bring third world nations into second world status and then eventually bring everybody into first world status, that everybody would be on a quote-unquote level playing field and therefore resources wouldn't be as scarce, food wouldn't be as scarce, blah, 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 yada, 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 BS, BS, ad infinitum. The problem is that never worked. And it never worked because you have people that live in deserts that uh, adhere to 7th century dogma BS and there's never been any kind of reformation there. So anytime they start trying, anytime anybody started trying to prop up more and more of the world, these people saw it as a threat. So now we've, we, those that are behind the scenes have taken a page from the if you can't beat them, you join them playbook. So now they're trying to destabilize the Western world so that they can sweep in and clean up the mess. Because, and I've been trying to tell you guys this for forever. This has been part of the playbook for a very, very, very long time. And now, because we've let, because they are using our own bleeding heart mentality against us, we have imported the very people that will eventually destroy this country if we do not wake up. And I hate to say it, but I think the damage may already be too far. I, I think it may be too late. Because Trump was able to put the brakes on it for a couple of years. And then the administrative state figured out how to take him out of the knees. And now Joe Biden, because he's so afraid he's going to lose, has taken tons of steps. At, I'm sure, the, the behest of both Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton. Because we both know that they're actually the ones 
pulling the strings behind the scenes. And who knows who's pull, who's pulling their strings, but we know that they're the the closest layer behind him. But we also know that Joe is taking steps to protect the administrative state. The administrative state is actually the deep state, not the people that you not the people they let you see on camera. They're the window dressing. Most of the people that you see on camera go to D.C. with the best of intentions. And then they get into positions of power and they realize there isn't as much they, that they can do to impact change as much as they think they could. So then they start looking out for themselves. It happens over and over and over again. If you don't believe me, just look at Speaker Johnson. Not ten minutes ago, dude was like, "Fisa's got to go, man." I was sitting, I'm, I was sitting in on those briefings and saw the F the FBI misusage, this, that, and the other. That's got to go unless they make some major, major, major changes. Dude gets elected to the speakership, gets brought into a skiff. Ten minutes after that, oh yeah, Fisa's great. We got to keep it. You know why he said that? Not because of the things that they told him that absolutely ter terrified him that are going to happen to us. It's because, ladies and gentlemen, the three agency alphabet soup names, or three-letter agency alphabet soup names, have been running this country for the longest time. Ordy and I delved into a little bit of this last night on a special episode of Juxtaposition, because it's going to take us two weeks to get through it all. CIA has been pulling a lot of strings for a very long time. Even in this country, on our soil even though they're not supposed to. Or they weren't until the Patriot Act was passed. There's parts of the Patriot Act you aren't allowed to see. If you've ever watched a show called, called Covert Affairs, you're going to realize that there has been a branch of the CIA created to monitor the homeland. Even though they are not supposed to conduct any business on U.S. soil, there is now an entire branch of the CIA that does just that. Now, was it, was it, i uh, trying to look at, think of the right word. Was it embellished a little bit for TV? Yeah, I'm sure it was. But the simple fact of the matter is if you look it up, you'll, you'll, you'll know that the actual branch that, of the CIA that Annie Walker supposedly worked for actually does exist. It's been around for a while. It was given a lot more power under the Patriot Act. FISA is basically part of the Patriot Act. It all sounds really good on paper when you look at it from the perspective of people that you trust trying to keep me and you and every other American safe. The problem is you can't trust the government, and they have proven it over and over and over again. And if you think you can't trust our government, just remember, I just read an entire part of an entire article to you about how an NGO tied to the UN was telling people how to disrupt American economy because of Palestinian oppression. This is the America we live in now. You and I are an endangered species. If you don't toe the line of the left, you are an enemy of the state. If you don't toe the line of the left, at some point, if they get enough control and power, they're going to put you in a re-education camp, or worse. And they've told you that much. Hillary Clinton is on record saying that MAGA voters needed to be re-educated. I mean, I don't know when the actual party switch that, that did happen happened because at some point we became the counterculture hippies because we're the ones that just want to be left alone. We want to be able to grow our own food. We want to be able to to hunt our own food. We want to be, we just want to be left alone. That's what the, That's what the 60s hippies always said they wanted. And then it didn't work, so they decided instead of trying to fight the man, they were going to become the man, and they did. And then the power that they once fought against consumed them.
All right. So a couple more hits on the way out the door because we are getting close to the end of the show time, but I figured we need to talk about this. So if you missed it, the other day, a Florida man, yeah, I said what I said, uh, set himself on fire outside of the Trump trial. Um, so live TV, everybody saw this man just, you know, light himself up. Um, apparently, he has passed away. They found a manifesto that had anti-government conspiracy theories. And also, at some point, he sued the Clinton Foundation. The man who set himself on fire near the courthouse in New York City, where former President Donald Trump is on trial, has died. Authorities said, according to his manifesto, the Florida man was allegedly an anti-government conspiracy theorist. Around 1.30 p.m. on Friday, 37-year-old Max Azario was reportedly espousing conspiracy theories and tossing colorful pamphlets around Manhattan's uh, Collect Pond Park, according to NYPD Chief of Department James Madry. Um, NYPD Chief of Detectives Joseph Kenny said the pamphlets seem to be propaganda-based, almost like conspiracy theory type of pamphlets, some information in regards to Ponzi schemes, and the fact that some of our local education institutes are a front for the mob. So, a little bit of conspiracy theory going on there. Azarito, a uh, from St. Augustine, Florida, was across the street from the courthouse where Trump's criminal trial was being held. He had not reached any security checkpoints to access the park. He was allegedly holding a sign with a link to a Substack site that featured his manifesto. He then doused himself in fire accelerant and lit himself ablaze with a lighter in front of horrified witnesses. Police officers and bystanders rushed to help the man who had just set himself on fire. The self-immolation lasted several minutes until officers could extinguish the flames. The The horrific incident lasted several minutes before the flames were extinguished by police officers and court staff. He was then rushed to, rushed to a local hospital in critical condition. However, he later died from his injuries. Pardon me. At around 10.30 p.m. Friday night, police said. He had reportedly driven from Florida and arrived in New York a few days ago. A letter was found at the burn site that read, I have set myself on fire outside of the Trump trial. The Substack website reads, My name is Max Azarello, and I am an investigative researcher who has set himself on fire outside of Trump's trial in Manhattan. This extreme act of protest is to draw attention to an urgent and important discovery. We are victims of a totalitarian con, and our own government, along with many of their allies, is about to hit us with an apocalyptic fascist world coup, he wrote. Mm, So far, I'm not so sure I disagree with him, other than the fact that he lit himself on fire. Um, He then claimed in his manifesto that the U.S. government is wrapped up in Ponzi schemes. Well, duh. (laughs) Our entire tax system is a Ponzi scheme. As a method to control the American people. These claims sound like fantastical conspiracy theory, but they are not. Uh, The Substack post read, They are proof of conspiracy. If you investigate this mountain of research... You will prove them too. If you learn a great deal about Ponzi schemes, you will discover that our life is a lie. Azarello was reportedly arrested three times in Florida last year. One of his arrests stemmed from an August incident where he purportedly threw a wine glass at a framed autograph featuring Bill Clinton at a hotel, according to police records. The wine glass broke, spreading wine on the frame, the wall, and the autograph, the report claimed. The wine stained the autograph and the surrounding wall when it ran down from behind the frame. Two days later, he was arrested again for allegedly stripping down to his boxers and yelling at customers at the same hotel in Florida. An officer said that he ventured into a fountain and cursed at hotel patrons in an intimidating manner. He was hit with misdemeanor charges of criminal mischief and disturbing the peace, the New York Post reported. The police report said that he was unemployed and suicidal in April 2023. He filed a lawsuit in New York against the Clinton Foundation. The lawsuit also named billionaire Mark Cuban and Meta CEO Mark Zuckerberg. Uh, Newsweek's uh, reported Azarello was representing himself 
alleged in the suit that the defendants knowingly conspired, participated in, and benefited financially from decades-long fraudulent schemes. He then claimed that money was solicited internationally, laundered in support of the scheme via the Bill, Hillary, and Chelsea Clinton Foundation, as it was formerly known, which was created for the purpose by of, of and by and for President Bill Clinton and Doug Band in 2001. In February, an active duty member of the U.S. Air Force set himself on fire outside of the Israeli embassy in Washington, D.C., that man said he was engaging in an extreme act of protest against Israel invading Gaza after the Hamas terrorist attack in October 7th of 2023. So in other words, play stupid games, win stupid prizes. But this is also what happens when you coddle mental illness in this country instead of trying to do something to correct mental illness in this country. I really didn't want to go out with this one, but it's probably going to be the last story that we're going to be able to get into before i got to start wrapping things up. So this happened in New Jersey, um, and this is reason number 11,472,000 that I'm thinking about eventually homeschooling my granddaughter. Uh, New Jersey family teacher 38 accused of sexually abusing 13-year-old girl. School received bomb threats. Okay. Um, a New Jersey middle school teacher has been accused of abusing a sexual or sexually abusing a 13 year old girl. After the allegation came to light, bomb threats were made against the female teacher and the school. Marble Memorial Middle School teacher Jenna Siabisia, 38, was charged with one count of harassment, offense, and uh, harassment and or offensive touching. The charge carries a penalty of up to 30 days in jail. The teacher was hit with the charge after the police department there conducted a month-long investigation, which included a review of surveillance camera footage, interviews, and written statements, according to NewJersey.com. The Marlboro Police Department consulted the Mammoth County Prosecutor's Office before charging the teacher. The teacher's attorney called the allegations outrageous and defamatory. Jenna intends to plead not guilty and vigorously defends herself in court. The attorney said in a statement, We are confident that once a judge hears all the facts in this case, Jenna will be completely exonerated and her good name, character, and reputation restored. The attorney added there was absolutely nothing illegal, improper, or immoral about the interactions between Jenna and this student on March 11, 2024. Quite frankly, it's outrageous and defamatory for Jenna to have been accused of committing a crime at all. Ansel noted that Sisabia had been dedicated to education of students for 15 years and has never had any prior allegations and or accusations filed against her and has an exemplary record. I'm, I know I'm butchering this name, which is why I keep, keep trying not to say it. Uh, Siabisa has reportedly known the alleged victim for three years. Jenna has a very close relationship with the student's family, even going as far as having been invited into their home on numerous occasions, the attorney said. The statement read, Sally, or sadly, as a result of these false, baseless accusations, Jenna and her family have been the victim of bomb and death threats. School officials allegedly informed the police that the teacher inappropriately touched the student over the clothes. Following the accusations, she was immediately placed on leave by the school district. As soon as we became aware of the situation, actions were taken and the staff member in question was immediately removed from her position. Hey, <laughs> giggity. Uh, Superintendent Michael uh, Bayonne said in a letter to parents sent out on Wednesday. However, the mother of the alleged victim is furious about the response to the accusations. On Tuesday night, the mother of the purported victim blamed the school board over the alleged teacher sex scandal and levied sexual assault accusations against the teacher herself. The mother said that the female teacher groped her 13-year-old daughter in a hallway. She called her a predator who sexually abused her daughter. During the Marble Board of Education meeting, the mother blamed the school for failing to prevent the atrocity that happened down the hallway to her daughter. The mother said in a statement, while we are happy that action is finally being taken, we are disappointed at the charge. It seems like they rushed to make it seem like they're doing something. We are hopeful that they will do the right thing for our family and community. 
On Thursday, someone made a bomb threat against the school. The school was closed and police launched a search but did not find any explosives. There was another bomb threat at the school on Friday. Authorities did not find a bomb then either. Police said there was a good possibility of a connection between the sexual assault accusations and the bomb threats. Ugh. 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 Uh. All right, I can't end on that one, so we're gonna we're gonna go out on a somewhat lighter note. Um. So, according to the de the debrief, they recently reported that scientists from the European Space Agency's Gaia mission have located a black hole with a mass of 33 solar masses, which makes it the largest black hole of stellar origin ever discovered in the Milky Way galaxy. The discovery, which was found after Gaia's fourth data release, could shed new light on the formation and prevalence of black holes throughout the known universe. The black hole, which has been named Gaia BH3, is part of a binary system located around 590 parsecs from Earth. That's a lot of parsecs. The discovery is significant because of the black hole's mass and because it challenges current models of stellar evolution and the formation of black holes, according to the report. Black holes are mysterious regions in space where the gravitational pull is so strong that not even light can escape it. While they are not visible to the naked eye, they are usually identified by, by the high-energy radiation emitted when they interact with other stars or gas clouds. So for anybody who wants to read it, um, I'm sure it's probably been touched on by some of the more sciencey crowd in here, but we're going to drop the article in the chat. Anyway, uh, just because I, I had to do a palate cleanse to get away from the teacher stuff. Anyway, so on that note, we are pretty much to the end of the program. I want to thank everybody for taking the time to hang out. I'll be off tomorrow. I've got some housekeeping stuff to do on a couple of projects that I'm working on. Um, then hopefully back writing for Twitchy on Tuesday, as well as doing the Rick Robinson Show Tuesday through Friday between the hours of 3 and 5. Um, then back producing for uh, the Cocktail Lounge on Tuesday night for Brad and Aggie. Aggie time, and that is 8.30 Eastern. Uh, then full boat programming Wednesday night, as far as I know, which should be whatever, followed by the cocktail, uh, not the cocktail, <laughs> toxic masculinity, good lord. Um, then the ladies of the red wine, and then Rick and Ordi uh, will be, and uh, Rick, I and Ordi will be your nightcap, good lord, I cannot talk tonight. Um, and then Thursday night, I'm back doing Jen and Rick, Friday, back filling in for Aggie Re uh, for. Mickey Blue Horse with Aggie Regan on He Said, She Said, also again at Aggie Time. Then Saturday night, regularly scheduled juxtaposition night where we finish up part two of CIA um, and JFK and all the stuff tied to that. Um, when I'm not doing that, you can find me as the executive producer of the Loftus Party podcast, which usually drops sometime around uh, Tuesday mornings between 9 and 10 Eastern, depending on how quickly I get it done. And is a contributor on both Misfits Politics as well as TheLoftusParty.com. But, ladies and gentlemen, we have reached the point of the program where I do have to tell you, unfortunately, this particular show is over, but thank you so much for hanging out. What? Over? Did you say over? Nothing is over until we decide it is! Was it over when the Germans bombed Pearl Harbor? Hell no! Closing time, open all the doors and let you out into the world. This isn't over until I say it's over! Closing time. Well, that's great. That's just fucking great, man. Now what the fuck are we supposed to do? Game over, man. Game over. Closing time, time for you to go out to the places you will. I love you, Oklahoma. What a great crowd. I love you.